Okay, look, I know, I know, I know, I know. I can hear some of y'all just shouting at me, and I know I'm gonna get torn to shreds in the comments for including Revenge of the Sith on the list. Now, before y'all do that, just please hear me out. I enjoy this movie. It's undeniably the best and most enjoyable movie out of all the Star Wars prequels. Unlike Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith is the most narratively tight of the trilogy, as it not only contains some of the most crucial moments of the Star Wars franchise, but it also does a very solid job of demonstrating the downfall of Anakin and Skywalker and how he eventually becomes Darth Vader. However, Revenge of the Sith still sustains some problems from its predecessors because of the fact that it has some major issues that prevents it from being overall a great movie. First and foremost, some of the dialogue is a bit cheesy and cringe. Some of the CGI still looks very unconvincing and janky. The Anakin Padme romance still doesn't work for me. I'm sorry. Look, if it didn't work in an Attack of the Clones, their romance wasn't going to work here because of the fact that Hayden Christian and Natalie Portman just don't really have good chemistry. And on top of that this movie stupidly created some plot holes that just don't make any logical sense to me at all like one plot hole where palpatine promises anakin that if he does whatever he says he'll keep padme alive but even with anakin following his orders padme ends up dying anyway but yet Anakin still sticks with him despite breaking his promise. So it's like, what? And a notable plot hole, and this is the one thing that has always irked me about this franchise, is that if y'all remember watching Return of the Jedi, where Luke asks Leia, do you remember your mother, your real mother? And Leia replies that she does remember her mother, but only just a little bit. However, this is completely contradicted in this movie, as Padme literally dies within minutes of childbirth after both her and Luke are born, but yet Leia says she remembers her Like, what? Like, what? George Lucas, what the hell were you thinking? You had one job. Literally one job. The guy may be terrible when it comes to writing dialogues and scripts, but if you were going to make these movies, you should have stayed consistent to make things add up that made logical sense from the original trilogy and implement it into these movies. However, despite all those issues I had with Revenge of the Sith, I will always have a good time rewatching this movie. There were just some major flaws and a few boneheaded decisions that were made that prevents the movie from overall being perfect. It's solid, but I can't call it a great film. Okay, look, 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 yet again, I, I know y'all are ready to get your torch and pitchforks and are probably ready to burn me alive for including the Tim Burton Batman films. As usual, just please hear me out. I know there are tons of people who absolutely adore these movies. I am fully aware of the cultural impact that these movies had, not just to the Batman mythos, but also to the superhero movie genre, along with the first two Richard Donner Superman movies. The production designs in both Batman and Batman Returns look incredible. Danny Elfman's musical score still remains epic to this very day and features memorable performances from Michael Keaton as Batman, Jack Nicholson as the Joker, Danny DeVito who was absolutely terrifying yet terrific as the Penguin, and the best of all, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. However, with all of that aside, I personally feel that Batman and Batman Returns are not only dated, but they just don't really work for me as Batman movies. What are some problems that I have with both films? Well, first and foremost, despite Michael Keaton's surprisingly good performance as both Batman and Bruce Wayne, he never really has a proper arc as he's never treated like the focal point in both films as Tim Burton mostly focused on the villains and that's a problem. There's nothing particularly wrong with giving some shine to other main characters or villains in movies, but if you put too much focus on the villains, then what the hell's the point of naming both movies Batman if it's not mostly about Batman? Second problem I have is that both movies had ridiculously campy moments and aspects that were just too cartoonish and just overly goofy. Like in the first film where Jack Nicholson's Joker was dancing to Party Man by Prince and the Rocket wielding Penguin shooting up in the air in Batman Returns. You could just tell that Tim Burton was going way too overboard with the goofiness in Batman Returns as he was clearly given creative freedom for whatever he wanted to do in terms of his direction and it really shows because the darkness, the goofiness, completely just cranks up to the max in this movie. And the biggest problem I have with both films is that Tim Burton makes Batman kill. I get that not every single thing in superhero movies has to be 100% faithful from the comics, but if you're gonna make a Batman movie, you never make Batman kill. Like what I said, I appreciate both Batman and Batman Returns for what they did for the comic book movie genre. Both movies are fun for Tim Burton films, but if I'm in the mood to watch Batman films, they're not exactly my cup of tea.
Crash is a movie that is remembered for all the wrong reasons, mainly due to the fact that it's despised for winning Best Picture at the 2006 Oscars above Brokeback Mountain, which is a far superior movie and was way more deserving of that award. But that's not even just the reason why I think it's overrated. Now, before I do that, I will say that Crash definitely has some things going for it. The cinematography is rousing, a sublime score that is so moving, and on top of that, a star-studded ensemble cast, including Sandra Bullock, Don Cheadle, Matt Dillon, William Fitchner, Brennan Fraser, Terrence Howard, Ludacris, Thandui Newton, Ryan Philippe, and so many others to name. However, all of that is completely squandered by its sloppy script and embarrassingly simple take on racial tension, class, and gender inequality. Crash is a movie that wants to say something big and meaningful, but its intentions are jumbled by its bleak yet simplistic worldview, which allows the worst of its characters to find undeserved redemption. Even though I can applaud this movie for trying to send a message, but I just thought the execution just fell flat. Shakespeare in Love won Best Picture over Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> well, let, let, actually, let me repeat that. Shakespeare in Love <laughs> won Best Picture over Steven Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> uh, fucking Harvey Weinstein. Zack Snyder is a very polarizing director who most people, including myself, have a very difficult relationship with. Now, usually for the most part, I hate to be harsh on Snyder because from a personality standpoint, he seems like a very wholesome dude. Usually when it comes to like the visual style in his films, they always look astonishingly great. But I feel like that's kind of the problem because I feel like he always chooses style over substance because when it comes to being a storyteller and structuring the plot of his movies, that is like his biggest weakness and it could have been more evident after recently watching The Rebel moon movies do i personally think all of his movies suck no the dawn of the dead remake and watchmen are absolutely phenomenal 300 despite being a bit silly is overall a fun popcorn movie and man of steel despite my nitpicks and issues with the film i think it's just broadly decent the rest of his filmography don't really do it for me at all. Now to talk about the Schneider Cut of Justice League, do I personally believe it's better than the 2017 theatrical version directed by Joss Whedon? Oh yeah, definitely. It has a lot more merits to it considering how much of a fucking embarrassment the Joss Whedon version is. However, just because it's better than Joss Whedon's version of Justice League, which is universally known as Justice League, doesn't necessarily make it a great film on its own because I'm sorry to say this, I, I, I'm sorry, I really am sorry, but the movie is insanely long and it's just kind of boring, especially with the film's runtime being four fucking hours. Now here's the thing, long movies can work if done correctly. As long as you can keep me engaged with the story of the film, the character development and the pacing, then I'm all for it. The Lord of the Rings trilogy, Lawrence of Arabia, Seven Samurai, Once Upon a Time in America, Malcolm X and Oppenheimer are the best examples of this. While the Schneider Cut definitely has some moments that somewhat justifies the film's existence, but the more I've watched it the past couple of years, the more the flaws have become very apparent to me. I get why they decided to make this movie four hours just to, you know, help out with the character development and all. And I get it was a very ambitious move, but I didn't feel like it was necessary because there are so many times where the movie felt like it just drags. Some of the dialogue just still feels a bit off to me. The R rating I felt like was unnecessary because it absolutely adds nothing to the film. Some of the CGI still looks pretty dodgy. The slow motion I felt like was just so overused and felt so repetitive. And even with Stefan Wolf having a vast improvement in terms of his look from the theatrical version still comes across as a bland villain. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but I think I'd have a better time rewatching the 2016 version of Suicide Squad than rewatching this. Look, as terrible as the movie is, as messy as the story was, at least it has a lot more entertaining elements to it that make it worth watching, and you have three great performances that also makes it a guilty pleasure. Overall, what I'm trying to say is Zack Snyder's version of Justice League is nothing particularly bad, nor do I consider anything particularly special. I just think it's a painfully mediocre movie that just feels a bit messy. But, but, at least it's a mediocre movie that is an interesting mess. La La Land?
more like blah blah land now i know i always get a lot of hate for this one because la la land to many people is one of the most critically acclaimed films of the century i can understand people's infatuation for la la land because yeah it has dazzling cinematography and yeah the dance routines for the most part is well done and you have incredible lead performances with emma stone and ryan gosling but the movie for some reason just has never clicked with me any of y'all who are longtime viewers on my channel should know that musicals are not really my cup of tea. Do I hate all musicals? Of course I don't. I adore the 2018 remake of A Star is Born, which most of y'all should know that is hands down my favorite romance movie of all time, as well as the original Lion King. I've been frequently watching the original West Side Story on loop, and even Grease, despite the movie being cheesy as hell, but it's still a classic regardless. I absolutely loved Whiplash. Not only do I consider it one of the greatest movies of the century, but also of all time. It is a damn near flawless movie that isn't just about drumming, but it brilliantly showcases the cost of greatness along with having two incredible lead performances from Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons. However, when it came to La La Land, this for me kind of served as Damien Chazelle's sophomore slump. Even with some of the diverting aspects of this film, some of the musical numbers just felt forced to me. The dancing at times made me cringe. And on top of that, the movie just lacks emotional depth, which made it extremely hard for me to resonate with. I can understand why La La Land is widely adored by almost everyone I know. But for me, I just think it's nothing more than a sugary Sato musical that has a very bland story that is just an overall no bueno for me. I cannot stand Frozen. Everything about this film's existence just irritates the living hell out of me. From the annoying overplayed songs like Let It Go or Love Is An Open Door, to the amount of overpraise that it received since its release, annoying characters like Olaf, and on top of that, a shitty main character in Elsa. Everything about Elsa as a character is just absolutely deplorable. Elsa is just such a deplorable character as she literally spends the entirety of the movie just being a complete dick to her little sister Anna, who literally just wants to spend time with her sister like any loving sibling should, but Elsa keeps shutting her out by just telling her to fuck off. And she literally frozes her heart. Sure, yeah, there was that lame twist villain with Hans, but honestly, Elsa is the real villain of the entire movie. I've never seen Frozen 2, and honestly, you could pay me a million bucks, and I will never have any interest of watching it, because I just don't find the Frozen movies all that interesting at all.